Bad news for, well, life on Earth. The ocean is running out of oxygen. Yeah. According to a new review published in Science, the ocean is running out of oxygen, but is running out at a rapid speed. Now, this, of course, is called deoxygenation. Uh, deoxygen, uh, boy, I'm having a hard time with that word. This is called deoxygenation. Now, the researchers discovered a four to tenfold increase in areas of the ocean with little to no oxygen. Now, you might be wondering why us land loving humans should worry about this. I mean, we don't live in the ocean, right? I mean, we shouldn't care about the ocean. But there's a few reasons that I'm actually going to lay out. For one, you'd be surprised to know that half of the Earth's oxygen originates from the ocean. So that stuff we breathe, about half of it comes from the ocean. I know that's hard, from some people to be, uh, hard for some people to believe, but yes, in the ocean, there are plants and animals that actually give off oxygen. And that happens to be incredibly crucial for marine life. If you don't have oxygen, it turns out a lot of marine life dies. That includes fish. Fish need to breathe. They have gills, right? If the ocean has no oxygen in it, then guess what? We no longer have fish. They all die out. And fish happens to be a huge staple of people from around the world, okay? So now fishing, obviously huge industry. So there's going to be a lot of people's livelihoods that are going to be affected by this. For example, fish kills in a single town they write in the Philippines cost over $10 million, according to the researchers, and coral reefs are valued at $172 billion per year, according to the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History. So, wow. Uh, now, those same coral reefs are already being slammed by ocean acidification and higher temperatures. They're also now going to be hit by a, a, a third thing, and that is the lack of oxygen in the ocean. Now, Lisa Levin, uh, who is a study co-author and biological oceanographer at Scripps Institution of Oceanography at the University of California, San Diego, told Newsweek, there are a whole bunch of livelihoods that depend on a healthy ocean that doesn't smell and doesn't have a lot of dead stuff in it, which would happen if the ocean no longer has oxygen in it. <laughs> so... Uh, she explains that when the oxygen gets very low in the ocean, animals leave if they can. Those species will relocate, either get eaten, or starve to death. So, how bad is this? Well, the team of scientists that study this uh, is from the United Nations Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission's working group. And they noted that the amount of water in the ocean without oxygen has quadrupled in 50 years. It's more than twice as bad for coastal waters, such as estuaries and seas. In those sites, low oxygen areas have increased tenfold since 1950. That sounds bad. Now, remember, the oceans make up about 70% of the Earth's surface. The amount of ocean that has no air, look, if this continues to go exponentially, well, in another 50 years, it's not a stretch to think that it maybe, at least in my opinion, could take up the space of entire continents. I'm not entirely sure. But it is really, really scary to think about an oxygenless ocean with no life inside of it whatsoever. No fish, you know, no sharks, no whales, nothing like that. Just empty water. So, what's the primary drivers of this? Well, you're not going to be surprised that climate change, uh, warmer temperatures brought about by climate change specifically. Uh, Levin explained that warmer water holds less oxygen. Also, increased surface temperatures make it more difficult for oxygen to reach relatively deeper parts of the ocean. The majority of oxygen loss is occurring at about 300 to 2200 feet deep. Now, oxygen is typically replenished when surface water mixes with the deeper water, but when the oceans are hotter, there tends to be less vertical mixing. Now, for me, I feel like we barely understand what the impacts of this are going to be. Like, of course, we can speculate, we can look at studies, we can do studies. 
But in reality, I think there's a lot of things that we haven't even thought of that we don't understand. Or at least the public at large doesn't seem to understand about what's going to happen when it comes to climate change. Maybe the scientists do understand or are beginning to understand, and that's why they're sounding the alarm. But I feel like, I don't know, I have a feeling that this is going to end up being worse than anyone actually thinks. I hope to goodness that I'm wrong. But Now, there's also another uh, source of deoxygenation, which is not caused by climate change. And this is, comes from excess nutrients from agriculture and sewage, which causes excess algae growth. They say the decay process of algae uses up oxygen in a process called eutrophication, Levin said. So, yes, that is still also our fault. So what can we do? Well, the decline in ocean uh, oxygen ranks as the most serious effect on, uh, effects of human activities on the Earth's environment, says uh, Denise Breitberg, who is the lead author and marine ecologist with the Smithsonian Environmental Research Center. But... As bad as that sounds, and as much impact as we have on creating the problem, we also can solve the problem. How? Halting climate change. Well, we could do that. Now, she says that it requires a global effort. However, even local actions can help a nutrient-driven oxygen decline. And they offered what they call a three-pronged approach to solve the problem. Tackling nutrient pollution and climate change protecting marine life from further stress, and improve low oxygen tracking on a global scale. So, uh, she says, tackling climate change may seem more daunting, but doing it is critical for stemming the decline of oxygen in our oceans and for nearly aspect for life on our planet. So, what she's saying is, look, we can, we can get a handle on this. If we actually go and, and take steps, we figure out how to, how to control our runoff. And then we figure out how do we mitigate, because climate change is already here. How do we mitigate the worst effects and make sure that it doesn't get even worse than it already is? And that requires drastic action on reducing emissions and reducing pollution. If we don't do this, well, we're fucked. I mean, and we've already seen what the Trump administration's response to this is. They just opened up, speaking of coastal waters, they just undid uh, rules that prevented oil companies from drilling on our coastline. So it seems like whatever we need to do to head off the worst impacts of climate change, we have decided we're going to do the complete opposite, you know, because MAGA. I'm telling you, man, we've got to get a handle on this. I know, look, the science is difficult. Sometimes it's, it's, it's difficult to understand and to get a full grasp on. But you might actually have to put your trust in the scientists who do this for a living. And they're all saying, 97% of them are saying, we got to do something about this. Because this could be very, very bad in the long run. Or it's going to be very, very bad in the long run. There's no could about it. So we need to do something, and we need to, to do something fast. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYTNation.